here. This is the fifth Zoom program, and um, this is sharing my process for making the living quilt for Sojourner Truth that will be installed on November 21st at Sojourner Truth Community Garden in Sacramento. And um, this is the fifth program, and I'm going through the whole process of how you make this handmade paper quilt with seeds for wildflowers in the pulp. And today's program will be to show you how I make the borders for this quilt. The quilt is in the North Star pattern. It's sort of an homage to Sojourner Truth, who was a famous um, abolitionist and suffragette. And um, the North Star, you know, has always been used to show us the way uh, at night and also there's a story that the Sojourner, uh, I mean, that the um, North Star quilt pattern was one of the ones used in the time of the Underground Railroad to point the way north for escaping slaves. So um, over here, you can see one of the quilt blocks. And this is the sketch that shows how it will be laid out. As I said, it's going to be eight feet by 10 feet. So we need four blocks across and five down, making a total of 20. And each of these blocks is 20 inches square. And here you can also see um, two strips of the border that I'm going to show you today. And I made this um, last night and it's drying. It's been a little bit of a challenge to get things dry because it didn't turn cold um, yesterday. And um, so we're putting them here inside, trying to dry them. And here on the table, you can see I have laid out, um, I use a big piece of interfacing fabric as the base to put the handmade paper on to dry it. And then I, you know, when I'm finished with this strip, I'll hang it up on the clothesline. And you can see I've already put down some of the strips. Um, and, you know, this is a 20 inch section. And then we have in between this three inch square and then another 20 inch section, three inch square, 20 inch section. And in order to do this and um, make it work together, I have to use <laughs> these uh, molds. This is the longest one I have, and it makes a piece of paper that's 16 inches. So I divide it in half so I can make two strips that are three inches by 16 inches. And I used a piece of the buttercut stencil material here in the middle. And in order to make that 20 inches, I used another mold and made all of it blocked off except two strips. And I'll overlap those a little bit so that they'll join together to make a continuous strip that's maybe 20 inches long. <laughs> and then, you know, this is the small mold and decal I've had. Um, that makes three inch squares. So, um, I'm gonna first show you the tub. I'm only using the white for the borders. And then I'm putting um, blue stars every 20 inches. So it'll have blue stars at the corner. I just put more seeds for white wildflowers in the bulb, stirred it up. Then I'm going to add a little formation aid. Remember, formation aid is a very slimy liquid. Um, it's like okra juice, but I also have a powder formation aid that's easier to carry around with you to different projects. And what the formation aid does makes it possible to make multiple layers and do thin paper, but it's still very strong. So I'm going to use this three inch square. I 
I did two dips there. I think that's enough. Depends on how thick the uh, pulp is. Then I'm going to skip a little space. And with my method of putting, you know, this quilt together, I'm going to have pieces of thread, natural thread, in between to join it together. And um, I need one more three-inch square for the other strip. I'm making two strips at a time on this piece of interfacing fabric. So try to lay that one here. Skip just a little space in between them for the thread. Use the sponge. Blot up some of the water. Squeeze the water over here. Take it up. Then you can use a paintbrush to make sure you got all the edges down. You know, just pat it lightly with the soft paintbrush. Okay, now I'm going to use the um, one that makes 16 by 3 inch strips. It's a little difficult in this tub because the tub is almost not big enough. For this size mold. I do have some bigger tubs, but I just didn't want to get them out. So I can do it with the general height. So I'm going to do two dips. And you see, because we have the strip in the middle, it makes uh, two strips. And you can see the seeds for white wildflowers in the fall. Okay, take off the vesta, bring it over here, and lay it down. Again, leave a little space in between there. And you can see how I had to put um, all my tables together to make this long, continuous pooching area so I could make these 10 foot and 8 foot strips for the border. Okay. Again, you can use the brush, make sure the edges are down so they don't come up. And we're going to put a layer on top of this um, because we're going to sandwich some thread in between it to join it all together and make it stronger so you can lay it out on the ground at the installation. So I need to make two more small squares at the end of this strip. This mold is coming apart. I need to get some epoxy and a clamp and put it back together. Okay, I'm putting one more square at the end. And I'm using what I call the modified Asian way of making paper that I learned in Japan. And um, I'm using abaca pulp for the white pulp. It's just a natural abaca pulp. And so you go in, lift it up, and because it has the formation aid in it, you have enough time to move it around a bit. And I kind of alternate between shifting it horizontally and then vertically. So this stitch will be horizontal again. And put this one again with a little space in between. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put um, some thread in between. And I showed you the other time how I take this thread apart. It's natural cotton string that you use for tying up the turkey or something. And um, I just unfly it, take it apart. So it's very thin thread 
um, but it gives it enough strength to help hold it together. And so I put three, you know, I usually put the threads about an inch apart, so I put three across this area where we have the spaces in between the, the long strip. So it'll be easy to carry it and um, store it or take it with you. I have to take all of this to Sacramento next week and um, build the bed and the headboard and the footboard in the community garden and get it ready to install the quilt. So you see I'm using my fingers and because it's a little bit wet, you know, once you get the strings wet, it stays um, together pretty well. Okay, I'll put some more string down here. And um, I guess because I used to be a weaver, I'm used to using thread to put things together and, you know, weaving and spinning. And um, so I found this is a very good way to make handmade paper stronger. And the thread doesn't really show that much, but it also makes it possible to fold it up take it with you, put it in a suitcase, um, and also transport and store it easily. And also, I, I think the thread is kind of neat because birds can use it after this paper quilt dissolves into mulch and um, goes back into the soil. Maybe some birds will pick up these bits of string next summer and put them in their nest. So I put three across at each of these places where I'm trying to join this long 10 foot strip for the border of the quilt. And, you know, again, you can use the brush and, you know, make sure those strings are going to stick down because we're going to put another layer over the top of all of this so that, you know, the thread will be sandwiched in there between these um, pieces of paper. And it'll be um, strong and easy to lay out on the ground next, uh, I mean, Saturday, it'll be two weeks from this Saturday, the 21st. Okay, now I'm going to take the small one and I'll start down here and cover up this string with another layer of the white. And this time I'm probably not going to try to make it as thick. You know, the top layer you can make much thinner because you've already got a good base layer there. And then just try to lay it right on top so that the thread is sandwiched in between. Okay, one more of these. And the sponge just helps to press it a bit and to get some of the water out. And then if, you know, any edges are sticking up, you use the brush again the ground. And um, now I'm going to show you the um, covering up the long part. And because this mold is only 16 inches, I have to use another um, mold and make another two strips that are about 
six inches and overlap them a bit. So that's what this one is for. And because this other side is blocked off, you want to make two strips there. And so to finish this up, you know, I have these two strips to go in this ear. Okay. And then the last thing I do for the whole thing is to put a blue star on the small squares that are in between the, the parts of the border. I don't think that screen was wet. Everything should be wet when you put it in here. But maybe it'll come off. <laughs> uh, just show you here how to, how to put it on the squares that are in between. Again, I made that uh, star shape and cut it out of the stencil material so that when you dip this mold in the paper, you only get the, the blue star shape. And it has seeds for blue wildflowers in it. So there'll be a few blue flowers also in the white border around the quilt. Okay, so to finish this up, I would continue, you know, putting the th thread and another layer of the white, and then the final thing, the blue stars on the top of it. And you can see over here, this one is drying, and um, you know, I think it's about dry. After it dries, you can just peel it off the, the interfacing and then use the strip of interfacing again. All right, um, now I'm gonna take you into the house. Uh, my studio is here in the garage. And uh, so we're gonna go in the house now and we're gonna lay out uh, some of the quilt so you can see how it will go together. And I'm gonna have to bring my computer with me, take off some of my layers. <laughs> okay, we're going inside. <laughs> Okay, we're going in here and I have Okay. I have a couple of borders um, laid out here on the floor. I'll put the computer over here on the couch. Maybe that'll be okay. And now I have all the quilt squares stacked up here. And um, you can see the North Star pattern with the four colors. And each color has seeds for wildflowers in that same color. 
And this, um, you can see it in the light. You can see the thread going through there that also helps to hold it together. And so because these are 20 inch squares, I need four going across and five the lengthways to make it eight feet by 10 feet. And so on Saturday the 21st, we will get some volunteers to help lay this out and um, put you know, one square in each of these spaces with the borders in between. And then um, in order to make it stay on the ground and not blow away with the wind or something, we will stake it down so that, um, you know, we'll push wooden skewers, also something that's biodegradable and will dissolve into mulch eventually. And then I'll have another border going across there. Um, I haven't made all the borders yet, but I'll put one across here so you can get the idea of how it'll look. Yeah, we will have one going this way. For the vertical. And that'll go down 10 feet that way. And then we'll have one going across this way in between that will be another one of the eight foot pieces that has four squares going across. And these are adjustable, you know, you can sort of move them around since it has the thread in between and it's flexible. That one, that one twisted, but you can get the idea. So um, on Saturday the 21st, we will be meeting in the garden. And um, now they have decided that since the coronavirus uh, pandemic is getting worse, that we should not have such a big public event. And so the Saturday ceremony is gonna be more or less like a press conference and, um, you know, we will also video it and record it so you can see it online later. So that's sort of how it will go. Um, we'll continue putting down the 20 squares. And we'll get all of this filled in and the borders in between. And the idea with this artwork is that over time, the handmade paper will dissolve and then, you know, maybe in the very early part of next year, the flowers will come up and bloom maybe in the early, early spring in Sacramento at Sojourner Truth Community Garden. So um, I think that's about it for today. If any of you have any questions you want to ask me or any comments, I'm happy to, to do that. Um, I should go back to my computer now and look at the chat room and see if anybody has um, put anything on that or any of you that are here, if you have um, questions. I'm going to stop. Stop Tim's video now and go back to mine. There I am. I see you. <laughs> so um, if any of you have any questions, I'm happy. Okay, who made the custom decals um, was one of the questions. And I made most of those myself. 
um, I got some old picture frames, just wooden picture frames at a thrift shop and um, put them together and you can use epoxy or some sort of um, waterproof glue. And then I got some screening that's thinner or finer woven than the um, regular screening you get from just the hardware store. You know, I have used fiberglass screen cloth, but it makes, you know, really um, not such nice paper because you always see that grid pattern. But Carriage House Paper in Brooklyn has the screening material that you can order and then um, use epoxy because it's waterproof and attach it to the frame. And I've made lots of frames myself. You can also buy them, of course, from paper making suppliers. And then to get the particular shapes, like the star, um, I use this material that's called butter cut. And it's a strange word, but they call it that because you can cut it with scissors. It's just like butter. And um, it has a sticky backing on it. I think I showed that in the second second Zoom program. If you look back on YouTube, you can see all of those other uh, other programs, and it you know goes through how you make the the custom decals. So you can make any um, shape. You know, I made the star shape, and you know all the other parts of it. Okay, and then someone asked, uh, what sort of volunteer helpers do you want on November 16th in Sacramento? So next week for the program, I'm going to be working in the garden at, uh, at the site of the installation, and we'll be weaving the headboard and footboard out of branches. Um, and um, so people can help with making that, and also we'll need some help spreading out the so all in the bed, we're making like a raised bed that's eight feet by 10 feet. And we'll fill it with soil and spread it out evenly. So it makes a nice surface to put the quilt on. And the headboard and footboard will be woven with um, also natural materials, branches from the neighborhood. My brother lives in Sacramento and he's got a neighbor that has a really nice tree that he is trimming and um, they are gathering up some branches now. And if anybody um, in the Sacramento area has other branches that, you know, they, they need to be flexible so you can, you know, weave with them. It's like weaving a big basket. Um, and then we'll tie it with natural twine uh, to make it sturdy and strong. And the headboard and footboard will last, and the bed, of course, will last for many years until it, too, dissolves as compost. So does anybody have any other questions? I can, um, yeah, it, unmute everybody. Oh, I don't know. Okay, running out of time, it says. <laughs> Zoom always puts a notice up here that you're running out of time. Thank you. So, um, you know, um, that's, that's it. If you have any other, hey, somebody is asking. yeah, I have one more question here. Glad to have the mystery of folding the paper was revealed. The string. Yes. I use that in many of my works. And I think that was, you know, because I used to be a weaver and I know you can uh, fold fabric or string without any problem. But um, the string sure makes it easier to make big works and to be able to transport them and carry them with you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or comments? We've got a few more minutes. They give you a warning, I think, 10 minutes before it's actually over. So if anybody has any other comments or questions, and so next week, um, the program will be about making the bed and weaving the headboard and footboard. And it'll be coming to you from the garden in Sacramento. And we hope it's going to work okay when we try to do um, video on the iPhone using a hotspot connection because 
nothing is open. You know, there's a school nearby and a library, but yeah. everything is closed now because of the pandemic. So it's another technical challenge, but I think we'll be able to do that okay. Oh, I have a question. Okay. Um, Jane. Hi. I, hi. I'm writing, um, I actually just wrote another story about a basket weaver in Sacramento who grows her own vines and flowers and stuff, leaves that she puts into her baskets. Um, oh, that's wonderful. I can contact her to see whether or not she has appropriate material for, to, for the 16th. Okay. It's in the pocket area, so that I'm would be great. thrilled to see your project. Yeah, and in some places, um, that's another question someone else asked here, is this the project, biggest project you've done? And no, I don't think it is. I've done many uh, other big um, outdoor installations using handmade paper and seeds. And you can look at my blog and uh, see some of those past projects. Um, I usually make the beds eight feet by 10 feet and then the headboard about five or six feet high. Um, and, you know, other places I've done different things, but, you know, I like making big projects. And in some places on the headboard and footboard, we've woven in some, you know, local touches. Like one I did in Noonan, Georgia, we put in um, dried hydrangea blossoms because everybody around there had lots of beautiful hydrangeas and they were just putting them out on the street and they were dry. And so, you know, it's kind of a finishing touch to decorate the headboard and footboard. We wove in some of the hydrangea blossoms. So Quirky, maybe your friend has some grape vines or, you know, something that she would does. sort of symbolize Northern California that we could put into the headboard and footboard. Okay. Um, I think the branches that my brother has located from his neighbor are mulberry mm -hmm. um, branches, which are really flexible. I've used those before in other installations, and they are easy to work with and, you know, bend without breaking too much. Okay. But anything she has, it's, as long as it's a natural material, that would... And, and that's what she primarily uses. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the purpose of her garden, is and I, I like using, for her baskets. Yeah, and I like using local materials. Okay. You know, as I said when I started this Zoom program thing, that I would normally be in Sacramento working there in the neighborhood yeah. for this whole time making it. But instead, I've been here all by myself in my garage studio making it and bringing you these Zoom programs to sort of share the process with the community. I shot off another question to you, but maybe I can just ask you. Okay. Uh, I know your Zoom sessions start around 2 o'clock, mm -hmm. and next Wednesday you'll be in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Would you like, if, if Eugenia or anybody else can come, would you and social distance and mask and everything. Would you like them there before two o'clock so you can? Oh yeah, that would be great. Or they can come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, okay. Friday. I'll be there working every day about, as I said on my blog, about 10 to four. And okay. you know, I may have to work longer if it looks like I'm not gonna get the headboard and footboard and everything ready. Okay. Because we will install on Saturday the 21st at two. So any day, you know, that they have some free time and want to just stop by to say hello or to help out, that okay. would be great. Okay, and, good. you know, we will do social distancing and mask and, you know, be careful about the numbers so that we right. don't exceed the, the guidelines um, right. that have been issued. Okay. Okay, so, okay thank you. <laughs> thank you all. And, um, you know, if you think of anything else, you can email me or... Um, I, I would be happy to answer any questions about this process. Thank you very much. I'm okay. going to end this Thanks meeting. Thanks a lot, Jean. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.